But um, as usual, 20 minutes is a really small amount of time. It, even for me, it's a really tight amount of time. So once I start, I will take care to kind of go through it quickly. Uh, note the time. I have a clock here to help me pace myself. So, um, so I'll start. We have 20 minutes once I start. So start. Okay, so electromagnetic induction is, yeah, Faraday's law, constable law for situations. Oh, uh, yeah, this is a question where it's a lot of word description, so I'll do that. Um, if there's a figure necessary, I'll draw that here. Answer descriptive, yeah, explaining if Faraday's law, model answer should describe in words, yeah. Okay, and, um, okay, magnetic breaking, when a conductor is pretty, it slows down, for example. Uh, I have a videos of that that I help you, so. Um, uh, if uh, spinning, yeah, comes to stop. Yeah. So the key concepts and terms introduced in this context is really eddy current. Um, changing magnetic fields around the conductor uh, causes eddy currents. Um, uh, which um, does a few things, uh, um, opposes any moving object uh, responsible for the change in magnetic field um, and um, dissipates away energy, uh, dual heating um, uh, with this uh, energy coming from the mechanical energy so um, so that's the key thing and I'll further explain the second paragraph as the magnet moves the magnetic field in a given region is changing and the changing magnetic field plus the um, magnetic Flux induces uh, uh, voltages according to the Faraday's law. If uh, um, these induced uh, voltages occur in the region with the uh, uh, region uh, occupied by a conductor uh, current uh, loops form which are called eddy currents. Uh, these currents uh, dissipate away energy and, um, and break the motion of um, the magnet. Yeah, that feels detailed enough. Um, you can also go into how the magnetic field produced by um, the the in, induced current is in a direction that would oppose the motion of the magnet. Um, but what I've written here is sufficiently detailed. An ideal electric motor made uh, has very little resistance in the voltage source, does not draw up to a large amount of current. Uh, explain how it happens. Start with the discussion of simple motor. Oh, diagram is okay. Um, see diagram in attached to work. So um, what the diagram would look like is something like this. Um, so we can uh, imagine having set up a, a magnetic field. Let's set it up this way. I have north pole here and south pole here. That's my permanent magnet, and in between those permanent magnets, I have a loop. So let me imagine having a loop like this. And around this loop, let's say I have current going in this way, flowing this way, uh, and so on. So uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, so this is going to rotate, and. Um, um, it's sure that uh, it's the work uh, illustrating the current loop um, 
in a region of magnetic field. Actually, I'm not. Uh, let me figure out the directions to make sure I've uh, shown the rotation in the correct direction. So with this magnetic field, uh, we cross the IL cross B. Um, yeah, so I think I drew the the force on this segment of wires actually downward. Uh, I uh, cross B. Yeah, the force on the or you know from your perspective it would be um, I is going into the page, so going into the page, and then uh, cross B uh, to the right. So it, the thumb is pointing downward. That's the direction of the force and kind of the opposite on the other side. So the this would be made to rotate counterclockwise. So uh, in, the, in the magnetic field, uh, rotating due to magnetic force on the uh, segment of the current loop. In the absence of uh, Faraday's law, this uh, torque um, For this law or motion induced voltage, this torque would mean that the loop is getting constantly angularly accelerated and it wouldn't have a theoretical maximum angular velocity. Uh, for this law, means that a uh, voltage is uh, induced uh, in the loop um, due to the rotation of the loop causing the magnetic flux through the loop to change. Um, this uh, induced the voltage opposes the applied uh, voltage, say lenses law. Uh, so, um, at a certain angular frequency omega, the induced voltage completely opposes the applied voltage, and there is a zero net voltage around the loop, and no the uh, current uh, flows uh, through the uh, wire of the motor. Um, this uh, uh, demonstrates a uh, mechanism induced the voltage, i.e. Faraday's law, uh, which limits the amount of current flow and the uh, rotational speed of a motor. Yeah, that's the answer. Um, 11 minutes, all right. Making good time, but I do have to kind of go uh, quickly. <laughs> in a circuit containing an inductor, the current through inductor does not change suddenly. Instead, a circuit containing a return, yeah. Uh, explains, describe how this happens. Okay, um, so it's uh, asking for a circuit diagram, all right, let's just draw a circuit diagram. So you can imagine a setup like this, uh, where you have a register, because everything has a register, and not having register will make your model somewhat, um, um, somewhat <laughs> impractical. And you have an inductor that's all connected. And let's say you just found yourself in some situation where some amount of current I0 was flowing then this is what you want to think through. Hmm, this current is flowing, flowing, flowing. Ah, it's uh, flowing through here, which means there will be an induced voltage delta V here um, that comes from current times resistance. Now, this induced voltage, because of the way it's connected, it's the same induced voltage across the inductor here. And with the inductor, what you have is that that induced voltage is equal to inductance times the rate of change of current, which means you now have non-zero rate of change of current, delta V divided by inductance. So this will cause the 
current through the inductor to change as a function of time, which will change how this voltage drop across the resistor is, which changes this rate, and so on. So to explain it, um, uh, is there some inductor and a resistor starting with the current? Yeah, it decreases. Yeah. Uh, so as the current I not flows through the resistor R, uh, there is a voltage drop according to the Ohm's law. This uh, voltage drop happens to be the same voltage drop across the inductor and from the inductor voltage relationship delta B um, for inductor delta B is equal to inductance times di dt um, um, this uh, voltage across inductor means the current through the inductor will change at the rate uh, d di dt is equal to delta v divided by l this uh, change of current causes the voltage drop across the inductor delta v to change um, and so on. The uh, current through the inductor changes at some rate until uh, we reach I of T is equal to 0. I think that kind of explains it. There's a step-by-step -step explanation and I haven't written down any differential equation other than this kind of basic definitional thing. Um, all right, let's keep going. Do I have five minutes or oh, eight minutes? Okay, enough time. Okay, yeah, the negative sign in Faraday's law has a special name, Lenz's law. Um, yeah, uh, one person can say it's entering the conservation of energy. Oh, yeah, so using a concrete detailed example demonstrate how Lenz's law does this. So um, the example that I like the best, because it's a classic example, is this one. So imagine you have a region of magnetic field. Let's have them just coming out of the board, out of the screen. And within this magnetic field, we have placed a rail, a conducting rail. And across this conducting rail, we've placed the conducting bar. And the way I'd like to set up this situation is where this bar has some initial velocity V0 towards the right. Okay, so let me first uh, work through the consequence of Faraday's law with the correct Lenz's law. So this bar moving to the right would mean electric flux through this loop is increasing, uh, increasing coming out of the screen. That means induced current has to be opposing the change. It causes the current into the screen. So with the current into the screen, then um, the current direction that will be consistent with that is one flowing clockwise. So we should have current flowing clockwise. Let me just verify from my perspective. Um, so wait, wait, wait. Um, <laughs> um, flux is uh, change in flux is coming out of the page. So I want to opposite. I want a magnetic field going into the page, and that wins. Yeah. Okay. Good. So with this current as it's being induced, this is what you have. You have current flowing down this rod this way which means I can work out the magnetic force on this bar. I have current flowing down and the magnetic field pointing out of the screen. Then the, the force is towards the left. There should be a magnetic force on this that's uh, pointed to the left that comes from IL cross B. And uh, this is actually all perfectly consistent with our intuition. You set something to start moving, and there are dissipative forces like this, which will cause it to slow down until it comes to a stop. I don't think I have any objection to that. So now let's uh, imagine um, the 
version with anti lenses law. So the anti lenses law version would mean well, let's uh, figure this out. So anti lenses law. It basically changes the direction of current. Let me make sure I have enough time. Um, so the, this current, instead of flowing in the clockwise direction that we figured out, it would actually flow in the counterclockwise direction. That's the, the immediate consequence of uh, anti-lenses law. Okay, as this flows, so that means my current is flowing uh, up the rod. As I have current flowing up the rod, that means, you know, to I cross B, so um, your magnetic force is to the right. So instead of saying this, we would be saying our magnetic force is to the right. And I hope as you look at that, you see the absurdity of that. What it's saying is, you set up a rail in a magnetic field, you have something conducting here, you give it a little gentle push. If it, any of this could possibly be right, what it would mean is that thing that was gently pushed, it accelerates forward, it speeds up, because this uh, magnetic force is in, would be in the same direction as velocity, and it would just launch out. And, and that's absurd, because energy is conserved. If, uh, uh, there isn't something that continues to provide more energy, like electrical energy. Then when you push it a little, it should maybe move a little and then come to a stop. And that's what this picture describes. This is perfectly consistent with that. So, um, so when you consider the classic example of a conducting rod sliding across a U-rail placed in a region of magnetic field, um, the direction of current you get with the lenses law results in a um, direction of a force that is uh, consistent with uh, uh, our ideas regarding the conservation of energy. Um, that is uh, moving things slow down uh, with the loss of mechanical energy via sources you can identify. However, if we assume the opposite direction of current, then the our analysis would conclude that the, that the direction of a force on the conducting rod causes it to speed up patently in conflict with the ideas of conservation of energy because such a result would create a new mechanical energy. Well, no, new energy period. Um, okay, did I have enough time? One, yeah, that's probably enough time. So yeah, this is mostly word-based, although it does have a um, place where I can attach this. So let me uh, submit first so that I won't get kicked out. Submit and then, and I can copy and paste these figures, starting with the B. I had the B. So B. And then, okay, I think I can get C and D together. C and D. Okay, so, so yeah, that's, a, um, so this, I'm pretty sure I got this from my final exams, past the final exams, and uh, one of the things is, um, it, it's kind of, you know, uh, I, I think uh, sometimes people fall into this trap of um, memorizing a bunch of formulas <laughs> and trying to study that way. And the main purpose of this question was to try to get people to think conceptually, uh, not over rely on formulas without understanding what they mean. So, so that's why this question is, you know, it really prefers um, the... Um, 
really prefers the word description. I think it's here. Um, or is it here? Um, I don't know where did it say word? Oh, oh I see. It's up here. Uh, in words. Uh, uh, in Faraday's law. Did I say? I think I mentioned the Faraday's in law in every place. Yeah. Is the current button? I guess here I didn't explicitly mention Faraday's law. It's fine. 